Northwest Trains and uh, today's unboxing is this Dapple Class 68 diesel electric locomotive and I've gone for 68032 destroyer in the Trans Pennine Express livery. Now the reason for getting this I've already got um one in direct rail service livery but I wanted to um get the Acura scale uh Mark V coach set that goes with this loco. Uh, I wasn't really in interested particularly in this livery till um, I got one of these uh, train sets from um, Liverpool Lime Street to York uh, last January. Obviously before um, the world went into to, uh, lockdown. But yeah, so um, I did enjoy that day out. So uh when the opportunity came to get um, one of these, I thought, why not? So I've pre-ordered the Mark V set. So we go back here again. I've also got the sand-fitted version of the model, as you can see there. So hopefully uh, it works because I got the last one direct from uh, Dapol itself. I just, out of curiosity, had a little look, see if they had any left. And um, they had one left with the sand-fitting. Uh, they had a couple left non sound fitted and uh, non digital ready, uh, non digital fitted, sorry. So, box open, usual paperwork. So, apparently, I get a no quibble 24 month repair warranty. So, that's good that that's uh, worth, worth what it's written, I suppose. Um, we've got our owner's guide here. So, that's for taking the body off the logo. What I've seen a few people do is they've used their existing 68 logos and they've just changed the bodies over, which I think you can buy separately. Uh, I did think about it, but I've not seen any bodies for sale, so in the livery I wanted. Um, so that's our DCC guide again, in case you want to pause it and take a look at anything. Uh, so, I suppose the important thing when it comes to running it, the sound function sheets again. You want to pause, take a quick look. I don't want to be boring you to death with it, so I'll just uh, show it briefly. Now, um, the loco itself comes in the usual packaging, which um, should be pretty safe if it's been bashed around by the courier. It's very, very tight packaging, this as well. I've not actually had this out of the box yet, but remember, the last one I had was uh, quite hard to get out of the box. So it does look stunning, it's a pretty heavy model as well. I can't remember the last one was packed with polystyrene or I think it must have been. But um, anyway, let's see if we can get the loco out. Yeah, I said it was going to be tight, didn't I? Let's see if we can push, there we go. Push one end. Yeah, I just to move all the boxes out of the way. Okay, so before I unpack everything, I presume that's our blank in place and our added details. There's a few, quite a few bits and bobs there, plus an extra couple there, I presume, for the front of the logo. And we've got our name plates destroyer there, so I'll just leave them there for now if I can. And uh, Here's the loco itself. Now, um, sure, these are actually off the loco or not. They're the bottom of the box. I have to check them. I don't remember them being with the other logo, but maybe. Um, again, very weighty model, like I said. See the fans in the top there. Very futuristic looking loco as well, I think. And um, 
it was it was good to see a logo hauled passenger train when we went to Liverpool Lime Street. See, it's already got plenty of details added to it. I suppose uh, I was, wasn't expecting it to be added to the back, but they are. With all that detail. And, uh, oh, come blow the camera. See all the detail. Blow there. Camera doesn't do it justice, really. The um, livery is very well done. I mean, um, if you probably won't get the zoom on it, but you can see uh, how detailed it is. I'll just see if I can put the camera a bit more sharper view. Here we go. So it's very, very nice that. And uh, it'll pull a good uh, a good load on the layout, I would have thought. So you can't see a driver in there. So uh, what we'll do is we'll get it on the layout. I presume that's where the speaker is, where these uh, holes are here. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to quickly check. I can't see them being part of the loco. But uh, let me just have a look. No, they're just purely to protect it in the box. That's quite a good idea. That I've not. Um, I don't remember if that was in my last sixty-eight box, but it's a good idea. Protects it. So um, just a quick history of the loco. Well, sh very short history actually. Um, I first saw these at Carnforth pulling nuclear flash trains, and even um, when the DRS Class 37s are hauling passenger trains on the Cumbrian coastline, 68s did um, pull them top and tail for a short while as well. Um, the other two operators are obviously Trans Pennine Express, which what we have here, and I think Chilton Railways operate them with Mark III sets. I don't know if they still do or not, um, as far as I know they do. And uh, they have a maximum speed of 100 miles per hour. And uh, I can say it was quite a comfortable ride actually on the Mark V coaches. Very modern, sleek looking. And um, there's 34 of these made between 2013 and 2017. I think they were first trialled on the, on the railway network in 2014. So, um, again, I don't want to go into too much detail. Um, so, we're going to get it on the track now, see how it sounds, and um, see how it runs. So, uh, I'll be back in a sec. Right, we have our 68 on the track. Just uh, want to show how good the detail is, because you can see how clear the writing is on this loco. See like down here, and uh, even like the detail on the wheels looks really nice. And you can see, I just moved the camera a bit over here. You, know, you can clearly make out the word diesel there, and all this little signage. I mean that's very nice. All these little warning signs here. I think um, they've all done a very nice job with this. You can see why they're very popular, these locos. So, uh, I'm just going to zoom out a sec and um, we'll uh, see how she goes. Okay, so um, she's on the track now. And um, function zero is light engine mode. So, um, so that's sat on the siding, so the lights come on. Okay, she's sat on the track now, so um Okay, she's sat on the track now, so function zero is light engine mode. So we've got our lights on, so if it's basically if it's sat on the siding. Um and then we got one which is the sound function. Sound on, sound off. And then we've got F2, which is playable high horn.
We've got low horn. And uh, four, we've got automatic buffering up when moving slowly. So we'll probably feature that a bit later on. Five, we've got brake application. Driver's door slam, number six. Seven, compressor. And number eight, drive hold. Number eight is a variable flying squeal depending on the speed. So um, again, we'll feature that a bit later when it's run. Uh, dispatch whistle, 10. And then uh, we've got a few other bits and bobs. We've got cab start sounds. Um, we've got different train modes, 19 and 20, parking mode, 21. So uh, we won't go into all them, but uh, so we'll basically give it a run now. And there, uh, see how it does. So, slow speed. In fact, what we'll do is... I'll turn the sound off for now and just see how she does um, slowly now. So, speed step two we're on now. Starts off really nicely. Smooth. So you can really appreciate the detail on this logo. And uh, it is a very unique livery with not having the yellow ends on it as well. So just bring it back a bit. What I'll do is I'll have this running as well as the uh, the other 68. So um, because, because I haven't got the Mark V to this set yet, I'll just run it pulling a freight train. Because uh, I know they have done them in the past when they were um, with the RS, so. Alright, sound back on. So, uh, hope you like the running session. I'm just doing the usual um, express point motor test, so I didn't absolutely no doubt that this loco would uh, go through it okay. There's a bit of a clicking noise on it, not sure why, but again, a few people have said why not change the points, and I think I will do eventually. But I thought it's a good test for when you for trying out a new loco because if they can go over these points without any problems, then they're uh, you're already halfway there for a decent loco. So that's just speed step three now. And it works fine, just like I thought it would. So going on to another Dapol product now. If we can just come back slightly. You remember my uh, haul videos? I've been getting these um, Mega Fret Wagons from Dapol. And... Um, I did actually have them running on the layout last time, and they ran really well. But first getting them, and then trying to run them with this loco. So I've swapped them for now for the uh, Backman um, container wagons. I've tried these on both tracks. They just derail on every curve or every single point they derail. Um, I know someone mentioned on another comment about putting a washer in to um, to help with them. I'm going to have to check his comments again to see exactly what he meant. I presume, obviously, he even means a coupler here or the, the bogey, but I think he does mean the bogey. Because um, for the money you pay for these wagons, and they can't run without derailing, is uh, not very good at all, really. And they are quite heavy because these containers are metal. But, um, yeah, I tried running the trains in every direction, uh, slow, fast, and uh, they just derail constantly. So um, I'm going to have another look at them. I don't really want to get rid of them because I do like the wagons. They're all nice looking. And um, I've seen them running on the West Coast Main Line, pulled by a Class 88, which is you know obviously the electric version of the 68. So that was the reason for getting them. But yeah, 
anyone with experience of these wagons let me know i really don't like this style of coupling here the fact that you've got to use a screwdriver to take the two wagons apart if you're putting them into storage if you're taking them on off the layout so um like i say let me know what you think it's always good to hear other people's ex experiences that's why i've included it in the video so we'll go back to the running session now and uh, we'll see how she does Right, that's concluded today's running session. Now, the only negatives I can find with this loco is um, it has cab lighting, but there's no driver in, in the cab, so that looks a bit weird. Um, I know most Bachman locos have a driver in them. But that's one little, very little minor thing. Uh, the other more important thing is uh, I was struggling to run this with um, any kind of freight train. As you'll see here now, is the wagon couplers are much higher up than this loco i knew that with my other one it does run well with the um the hornby mark twos as you can see even though there is still a bit of a height gap but unless the loco's hook gets hold of the wagon which it never seems to because it always seems to pull to the left like like you can see there it never actually catches the wagon so you've physically got to push it to one side for it to catch again if you've uh, solved this problem please let me know but as you can see the wagons hook is doing nothing whatsoever so I mean that's back and wagons the Hornby Dapple uh, the, sorry the Dapple wagons I mentioned earlier 
are exactly the same and that might even contribute to the derailing although the old derail with each other as well anyway so I wouldn't thought it was that but yeah I'd, um, I'm not sure why the couplers are that much lower than the rest there I, I know the Helgen class 05 got a bit like that the coupler dangles a little bit so no good for shunting but yeah let me know what you think but that's uh, the last of the unboxings anyway so I'm looking forward to getting the Mark V set to go with it. Hopefully they couple up all right. And um, thanks again for watching and uh, keep an eye for the next video. Mm-hmm.